Hello, good crowd. We are so fortunate today. We have with us Rhea Van Brocklin. She's the executive director of Christie's Place. She's doing amazing work, but she's raised money on Caring Crowd, We're our sponsor. We're going to have a great conversation. You don't want to miss this. Stick around. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Please support the sponsors who made this episode possible, including Johnson & Johnson's Caring Crowd and goodcrowd.school. Rhea, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? We're thrilled to have you. Uh, tell us about Christie's Place. So Christie's Place, we're an HIV service organization located in sunny San Diego, California. Um, we were kind of the birth of uh, a place where Christy Melton Torres, she was a woman living with HIV. Um, she worked with her family and with her parents to create a safe space for women and children and their families who are affected by HIV to gather, to have a place that's, that they can call their own. Um, a lot of the women that we serve suffer from isolation and don't have a lot of support systems. So we're really here to help them and help them access care, access those important services and, and be willing and able participants in life. You, how long have you been there? Uh, really? I've been here for about four weeks. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm the brand new ED. I, uh, Congratulations. I'm so excited to be here, but I've had the pleasure of working in this field for almost 20 years. Well, as you think back over the last 20 years, uh, haven't things changed a lot? They sure have. They sure have. HIV is probably one of the most dynamic fields. If you're wanting to, to get into social services, things are always changing in this field. Medications are coming out, the types of treatment that people take to help with, with managing their disease is constantly improving. It's never a dull moment. If you think back 20 years-ish, to the turn of the millennium, we had uh, at that time, the drug cocktails were really quite new, mm -hmm. uh, weren't they? Am I remembering right, the timeline? Yes. Yeah, they were, they were pretty new, yeah. And, and so I, I guess it was, we were a little bit past feeling that uh, an HIV diagnosis was a death sentence, but it was a very, very scary time, wasn't it? It sure was. You know, I started in this field in 2001, um, but I had ties to it even before I made it my profession. And I remember being a case manager, a prevention specialist in 2001 in Midwestern Des Moines, Iowa. We were helping patients who had um, a regimen of medication that was 10 plus pills twice a day, sometimes three times a day. So the fact that HIV has become a manageable disease, one that doesn't prohibit you from living your best life, and as long as you access care as soon as you find out your diagnosis, it really has changed, especially over these past 20 years, where most of our folks who are HIV positive and linked to care go on to live very fulfilling, very impactful lives. And what does the care regimen look like today? It's not 20 or 30 pills, right? No, it's actually pretty amazing. I have some clients, um, we, we serve some women who are on a regimen of one pill a day. And, you know, for folks who are interested in preventing the getting the virus, so say they have an HIV positive spouse or partner, they can take PrEP, which is a medication that helps prevent getting infected with HIV. Similarly, it's one pill a day. Um, so treatment has come such a long way. And what we're finding with our, our patients, our clients, is that really it's those support services that they need to avoid being isolated in the community, having people that they can turn to if they need help with food, with housing, with just an ear to talk to, a therapist to listen to some of the, the mental health issues that may be happening in their lives. It's really all of those support services that we offer here at Christie's Place that helps them to become very managed in their disease and, and really enjoy life as they should. So this is a 
a residential facility or a drop-in facility or both? You know, we're really, it's, it's a little house <laughs> about three blocks from Balboa Park. And um, it's, it's not a residential facility. It's not really a community center, but we like to build our community. You know, we believe in offering social events for our women to participate in, their families. In fact, coming up next month, we're doing our annual back to school party. So we have local hospitals that donate to help us fill some backpacks. And we go out to Balboa Park and have a barbecue and invite our families to come down, talk to one another, have the kids play in the park. And it's a, it's a wonderful event where, again, this is something where people don't have to think about their HIV, but rather really focus on living their best lives. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you do to support the women you serve? As far as uh, helping to keep our doors open or? No, in terms of the, the actual services that you provide. Oh, okay. Um, so we offer coordinated HIV services, which is an umbrella program for doing medical case management, helping them access a medical provider that's experienced in HIV care. Um, we also offer non-medical case management, so a case management program that helps them address all of those social support systems that they need in their life to maintain care. Um, we also offer um, mental health therapy, so we have a couple of counselors that the clients can meet with and talk to and help address their mental health issues. We have um, support groups here at Christie's Place. We offer, um, wow, all of these services. So, you know, some of the patients that we work with, some of the clients that we work with, um, they're homeless or they don't have a kitchen to cook food in. And our location has a kitchen that they can come in and prepare a meal. Um, we offer a computer access to those that don't have a laptop at home or a computer lab that they can go to. Um, we're always open here for, for that kind of service. And I think the best thing that we offer too, um, we have a great peer navigation program. So some of our staff are themselves women living with HIV, women and men living with HIV. And they help our clients really navigate the system of care. So a lot of times when you're first diagnosed with HIV, you don't know how you're going to deal with it. It can be really scary. Um, you may have all of these ideas in your head that, um, you know, are not healthy. And so our peer navigators provide that emotional support, help hold the hands of those that that are scared of starting the process and they really help lead them through those systems that can be overwhelming at times to, to, so that they can be successful and know what path to take. Yeah. Amazing work that you're doing. Thank uh, you. The, you raise some money on Caring Crowd. Tell us a little bit about your experience raising money on Caring Crowd. It's such an easy process. I was really surprised at how wonderful it is. The fact that our organization can be viewed by millions of people, some of who don't live here locally, um, but they connect with the mission of Christie's Place. I think it's so important and it helps to bring our organization to the forefront of where we need to be in order to you know, maintain funding and, and keep our mission alive. When you were raising money on a Caring Crowd, uh, did Johnson & Johnson match donations for you? They did, yeah. Uh, how did that help your fundraising? I mean, every bit helps, you know. We have, the thing about being a nonprofit, especially a community-based organization, we don't offer clinical services here as far as like medical health care. Like I said, we have the behavioral health piece, but the fact that we can raise funds to support things that, you know, our federal funding doesn't really support or, you know, there's restrictions when it comes to grants, um, like the social events, 
like the back to school nights or our holiday party. They can buy turkeys for our clients. Um, we can celebrate Dia de los Muertos is a big deal here in San Diego. We're a border town, you know, sure. so sure. a lot of our clients celebrate that holiday and uh, funds from Caring Crowd and from Johnson & Johnson can really help to support um, decorations that we might use for that or food that we can provide for our clients. It's, it's so important to not be isolated when you're living with HIV. It's really good that you connect with other people who understand what you're going through and can keep you engaged in the community. And so getting those funds through this type of fundraising is incredibly important and appreciated. Rhea, as you look back over your career, what's the most important lesson you've learned? Oh, wow. <laughs> so many lessons. Um, I think for me, being in the field for a while, it's to stay hungry and always look at listening to the needs of the folks that we serve, listening to the needs of the clients and of the community, and finding a way to make sure those needs are met. Be creative in your work and never stopping to be complacent, but always wanting to evolve. I think that's what makes organizations stick in this type, this field of work. And I think that's really kind of the place where Christie's place is now. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. We're kind of entering in this new, exciting, hopeful stage, this chapter in our, our life here at Christie's place. And any support that, you know, people out there who might connect with our mission can offer is always incredibly appreciated and we're grateful for all of it. Oh, fantastic. Rhea, what draws you to this work? Uh, I mean, this is a uh, wonderful, special work that you're doing, but how did, how did you find yourself doing this? Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, you know, I have a per personal connection to HIV. I, I had a friend who um, was living with HIV when I was in high school and did HIV prevention when I was in college and just really connected with the fact that this is back then, you know, this was a disease that you can prevent with education and um, knowing how people are treated who are living with HIV with stigma and um, having them having to become resilient. The resilience of our clients, I think, is something that is just amazing to witness because you have people who have struggled with being outcasted by their families or not finding a place where they, they feel like they belong. And then to work with people in the field who can provide that strength and that support to them to where now you have them being advocates for others is probably one of the most amazing things I've witnessed. Um, I remember in Iowa, I worked with um, a client to do an anti-stigma campaign that was statewide and she had never spoken in front of a group, you know, like she was, she, she wasn't incredibly out about her status and was nervous about it. And the next thing you know, she's going to national conferences and telling her story. And it's listening to those stories of hope and of resilience that keep me coming back and keep me wanting to stay in this field um, and helping, helping our community and our, our clients grow and become empowered and come from a place of strength. You know. Oh, that's great. Uh, Rhea, what's your superpower? Oh, my superpower. <laughs> um, you know, for me, I think it's, I have that, that sight. I think it's vision. It's, it's understanding what needs to happen before it really happens. Um, I think planning for the future and always, you know, I say relevance is such a huge word. Um, we need to be adaptable. We need to change so that we can impact those who need the help the most. Um, so I feel like I do a pretty good job of that. And, and I'm really excited to bring some of that skill here to Christie's Place. Oh, fantastic. Well, Rhea, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about Christie's Place and how they can Absolutely. Um, please feel free to visit us at www.christiesplace.org. You can look at our website, see some of our upcoming events. We have a couple of job, uh, job positions open right now. So if you're interested in joining us in this field, we'd love to have you. And thank you again for all of your support. All right. 
Rhea, thank you so much for being with us. We wish you every success in serving the, the vulnerable community of, of people in San Diego there that are uh, experiencing HIV, living with HIV. So thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank All you. Right. Let's do some good. At Caring Crowd, we believe everyone has the power to make a difference. Through our crowdfunding platform for community health, we empower passionate people to drive real change. Whether you work for a nonprofit organization, volunteer, or want to get involved for the first time, you can post a campaign on Caring Crowd. Join us, because caring is where change begins. At goodcrowd.school, 5% of what you pay to learn how to make a difference goes to nonprofits working to eradicate extreme poverty, improve global health, and reverse climate change by 2045. So when you take a course to learn how to change the world, you do change the world. Get started at goodcrowd.school today. Thanks for tuning in to the Your Mark on the World Show, the Social Impact Podcast. Please subscribe via YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Spotify. Spotify.